Tennessee River. The Tennessee River exhibit offers a unique view of life below the surface. Gars sit motionless while sunfish peek out from the protected area and giant catfish cruise the depths. Sunfish have colorful names such as bluegill, red breast, green, pumpkin seed, and orange spotted. Okay. Bluegill, 15 inches. Red ear sunfish, 15 inches. Spotted bass, 24 inches. River cooter, 12 inches. And black crappie, 19 inches. Did you know Tennessee State sport fish is this smallmouth smallmouth bass, while the state commercial fish is the channel catfish. Okay. And we got another sign, so I don't know what this one is. The long nose. Black crappie. Yeah. <laughs> Another one with a long nose. <laughs> the Tennessee River exhibit is the largest freshwater exhibit in the aquarium and one of the largest in the world. And ten, in the waters of the Tennessee River, fish go about their daily activities. Blue gills serve as cleaner fish for largemouth bass by removing loose skin, scales, and parasites. Largemouth bass, 38 inches. Common carp, 48 inches. Warmouth, 12 inches. And red-eared slider, 8 inches. Did you know the freshwater drum gets its name from sounds it makes using muscles around its swim bladder? I think this is continued over here even. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Smallmouth small mouth buffalo, 40 inches. Spotted gar, that's the one we were seeing earlier, 44 inches. Did you know a male turtle wiggles its long fingernails in a female's face during courtship? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's weird. Get out of my face. Uh, how you spell that, or how you pronounce that? Watch your talk. Okay, map turtle, nine and a half inches. Um, yeah, that's the, which one? Uh, that's not one of those, that's a catfish, I think. There's supposed to be a turtle in here somewhere. <coughs> Yeah, it goes deep down in there. <laughs> Do we get to see that on the first floor? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think I see people walking by on the other side over there. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> There's supposed to be a turtle in here somewhere, but I haven't seen him yeah. yet. Maybe he's hiding over here. Here's a gar, a spotted gar. This one's hiding around the corner. <laughs> Long nose gar, 72 inches. Long ear sunfish, 10 inches. Red breast sunfish, nine and a half inches. Black buffalo, 40 inches. Paddlefish, okay, 87 inches. And false mouth turtle, 10 and three quarter inches. Large fish called buffalo spend much of their time rooting through the bottom in search of food. Sunfish build and tend their nests in the shallows. Aquaculture, raising fish in farms. Globally, humans receive more than 15% of our animal protein from fish and other seafood. 
As our population grows, we've turned to aqu aquaculture to relieve pressure on wild fisheries and provide new food sources. Aquaculture is growing rapidly, and now roughly half of all fish we eat in the U.S. is farm-raised. Farm low on the food chain. Large predatory fish aren't well suited for agricultural uh, aquaculture because they are carnivores. It takes 20 pounds of wild fish to harvest just one pound of tuna. In the U.S., farm-raised rainbow trout and channel catfish are fed plant protein, which is a more sustainable way to grow fish. In other words, fish that live on other fish are hard to grow in aquaculture. Yeah. Other good practices in aquaculture. Some inland fish farms recirculate water. This keeps population out of natural waterways and reduces the risk of escape or disease. Raising a variety of species in the same pens, polyculture is much more efficient than raising a single species as different species can more fully utilize feed. Examine your seafood's country of origin label. Choose fish raised or caught in the U.S. as a first step toward a more sustainable diet. Yeah. What's wrong with this picture? Yeah. All the trash? Most of our exhibits showcase the beauty of the natural world. This one looks a little different though. What happens to rivers and streams when we don't take care of them? Litter and plastic pollution. A small careless action with our litter can lead to a big problem for our wildlife. Animals can get hurt from litter, which may wrap around them and restrict movement. If they mistake plant plastic for food, and eat it, they will not get the nutrients they need to grow and thrive. Unfortunately, most litter that is tossed away on land is washed into streams, rivers, and the ocean by rainfall and wind. Did you know that storm drains, unlike the sewer system, release directly into the nearest stream or river? Invasive species. Invasive species are animals or plants that have been moved outside of their native range because of human activities. When they end up in a new habitat, they may be able to expand their numbers quickly because they have no natural predators. Their rapid spread can then reduce the amount of available resources, such as food, water, or sunlight, for native animals in that habitat. If you catch this fish, do not release it is highly invasive and a threat to the e ecosystem. Bring it immediately to Central Park Conservancy staff located at the something get center. Dana Center. Interesting. It's a snakehead. Help us erase these mistakes. Litter and invasive species are both big problems. Litter isn't just ugly to look at, it also costs money to remove from the environment. Invasive species can cause millions of dollars of damage each year by clogging water pipes or harming the fishing industry. You can help by taking any of the following actions. Pick up litter, whether on your own or as part of a larger cleanup effort. Never release any animals or plants unless you caught them yourself in the same location as you're releasing them. Wash and dry your boats, waders, and buckets before using them in a different river or stream. What's really beneath the surface? All living things depend upon clean water, but pollution threatens the quality of this vital resource. Every time it rains, trash, silt, or chemicals are carried into our water. Small plastics are a big problem. When plastic bags, bottles, and straws break down, tiny particles called microplastics are created. These may enter the food chain through the plankton or larval fish, potentially winding up in the seafood we eat. 
the growing concern a single use plastic or the a growing concern is is single use plastic. Larger objects can entangle animals or be mistaken for food, causing injury or death. Northern snakehead, 33 inches. That's what's swimming around up here. And he's way up there at the top. Can't see him right now. There's another fish. Trends show that recycling is not keeping pace with the amount of plastic produced each year. The solution is in our hands. We are part of a group of aquariums across the country working to significantly reduce our single-use plastic. We'd like you to join us on this journey. Pledge to skip the straw, choose reusable water bottles, bring reusable shopping bags to stores, keep recycling any plastics you do purchase, and join a river cleanup like Tennessee River Rescue. He's right there. I almost see him. Here it goes. That is the northern snakehead. Real Foot Lake. Between 1811 and 1812, a massive series of earthquakes occurred near New Madrid, Missouri. That's kind of close to where we live in Kansas City, isn't it? It's on it's on the other side of the state? Okay. The earth heaved so violently along the Mississippi River that in some places the ground and riverbed sank 10 feet. This caused the river to temporarily reverse and flow in giant waves into the depression. In Tennessee, a 20 mile area sank and flooded, creating Real Foot Lake. Watery Refuge. With a large surface area of 18,000 acres, Real Foot Lake's quiet surface provides a safe home for wildlife. Most shore, shore birds used in the Mississippi Flyway visit this vast swamp. This refuge, for, this refuge for rare wildlife is threatened by erosion as silt from agricultural and logging sites slowly fills the shallow lake. Citizens, government officials, and wildlife agencies are working together to promote responsible erosion control practices that will allow wildlife and recreation to continue to thrive in Real Foot Lake. Protecting a Behemoth. Scientists from the Tennessee Aquarium Conservation Institute are studying alligator snapping turtles near Real Foot Lake to determine what actions may be needed to protect the species in West Tennessee. Working with conservation partners, our researchers tagged the turtles and collected tissue samples to learn how healthy their populations are and whether mercury is contaminating their waters. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's just about where Sykes in Missouri is. Okay. That's the southern tip of Illinois and Missouri right here. See where Rupert Lake is? Mm-hmm. steps of Real Foot Lake is only five feet. The shallow water creates a suitable habitat for many aquatic plants. Black crappie, 19 inches. Creek chub sucker, 11 inches. Yellow bass, 16 inches. Spotted sunfish, 8 inches. Paddlefish, 87 inches. Cargill, the Real Foot Lake exhibit, was made possible by a generous donation from Cargill. We bought loads from them a long time ago. But the lake's five feet deep and it's got a nine foot fish in it. Is that what it was? Eighty seven. Yeah. <laughs> seven. Seven and a quarter feet. <laughs> I think that's is that that white one? Uh, no, that's a shovel nose, I think. Miguel yeah, yeah. Okay. What about that crazy looking thing? Okay. 
think that's the one you were. Yeah, the big one. Real Foot Lake, Tennessee's largest natural lake, was formed when an earthquake caused a portion of the forest to sink. The Mississippi River flowed backward, filling the area with water. Long ear sunfish, 10 inches. White crappie, 21 inches. Blue sucker, 37 inches. Pallid sturgeon, 6 feet. Shovel nose sturgeon, 36 inches. And warm mouth, 12 inches. Yeah, that's that funky fish. That, Which, that 87 inch. Okay. One. Yeah, that was that's a crazy looking fish. I think that's the shovel nose. That one back there. Okay. This is backwaters. Backwaters, the shallow backwaters and bays of freshwater rivers and lakes support an abundance of aquatic plants. These plants, in turn, provide food and refuge for a complex community of animals. Valles Naria. I guess that's this greenish stuff. And Rainbow Shiner, four inches. Aquatic plants exhibit a wide variety of adaptations to water depth and temperature, fluctuating water level, and amounts of light. Some species are fully submerged, others have floating leaves. Emergent species are rooted underwater but bare leaves above the surface. The food web is evident in the backwater habitat. Tiny invertebrates feed among the sediments and in turn provide food for amphibians, reptiles, and fish. Tricolor Shiner, three inches, Alabama Shiner, five inches, and Kusa Shiner, two and a half inches. And the invertebrates are talking about, you see all the snails? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. snails sitting right there. Uh-huh, they're all over this plant. Yeah, there's one right there. Uh-huh. There's one up there. There's several up there. Yeah, there's a bunch of way up there. So the snails eat the plants. Uh huh. The fish eat the snails. Okay. There's a colorful one right there. Um, it could be the rainbow one. Rainbow, maybe? I'm not sure. Okay. White tail shiner, six inches. Black nose base, five inches. They're all right there. They're all right. Oh, down here. Yeah. There's nothing up at the top of the water. Okay. They're all right here. Three. Yeah. Okay. Round the corner here. There's that one. The hill bender. Uh huh. We saw uh, something talking about that one earlier. Uh -huh. Hellbender, 29 inches. Northern red salamander, 4 to 6 inches. He could be almost anywhere in there, honestly. Yeah. He could be hiding in one of these holes. Mm hmm. I don't think we're gonna see him. Black bellied salamander, eight inches. I don't see him either. Yeah, and again, he could be wedged into one of those crevices. Salamanders of the Southern Appalachians. Some of the most successful species in this land are of isolated valleys, hollows, cove forests, and swamplands are the salamanders, found under leaves, along stream beds, between rocks, and even perhaps under your house. Salamanders find that this part of America offers ideal habitat. The southern Appalachian region harbors a great variety of diversity or diversity of wildlife species. Salamanders are an excellent example of this diversity. 
These shiny, the, these shy creatures range in size from the tiny pygmy salamander, only one and a half inches long, to the lethargic two foot long hellbender found lurking in stream beds. They may be spotted or striped brown, red, or black. Look for salamanders on a warm, rainy night. Search under leaves and rocks or under a soggy old wood pile. Salamanders are amphibians, which means they can live on land or underwater. Amphibians hatch from eggs, usually laid in the water, and spend their young lives as gilled larvae, swimming in pools or streams. Adults can live on land because they can breathe through their skin or through lungs. In moist eastern forests, salamanders are often the most plentiful vertebrate or backbone species. They are a pivotal species because they live in the middle of the food chain. If salamanders aren't active in the habitat, insects may overpopulate. At the same time, animals like mammals, owls, and snakes hunt salamanders as an important food source. Healthy forests and wetland ecosystems ensure that plenty of salamanders will thrive. The rare species of salamanders in this area depend on humans to protect their habitats from draining, forest cutting, or bulldozing. Pollution, acid rain, and drought can also harm salamanders. Southern Appalachia has everything salamanders need. Plenty of moisture, mild winters, and thousands of places to hide. Because many areas are isolated, more individually in, in, distinct species of salamanders have developed here than anywhere in the world. Some salamanders live in underground caves and never venture above ground. Others depend on seasonal or ephemeral ponds when it is time to lay their eggs. Freshwater giants. Freshwater fishing is the most popular recreational activity in the United States. Based on license sales, nearly 60 million anglers old enough to need a license have gone fishing at least once. Most dream of that great catch. Listed below are the heaviest fish caught by rod and reel in the world as of 2011. Big fish. Yeah. 468 pound sturgeon, white. Holy cow. Where? Beneath here, California. Okay. Yeah, this side shows where and who and when. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> But on a rod and reel. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> what did he have for the rod? <laughs> um, a steel beam? No, uh, uh, what's Wolverine made of? <laughs> Adamantium? Yeah, that. Your drop matters. Follow these four steps to help us protect freshwater animals. Discover your connection. Find out what river supplied your drinking water and where does that water go when it leaves your home. Reduce your impact. Make a pledge to stop using single-use plastics. Skip the straw and carry a reusable drinking water bottle everywhere you go. Offer help. Join a stream cleanup program like Tennessee River Rescue and share that information with five friends. Play and enjoy. Appreciate what we have by getting out in nature and splashing around. Explore rivers, lakes, and streams. It helps develop an understanding that we protect what we love. All we need, and we all need clean water as much as trout, sturgeon, turtle, or otter. I think we're almost to the end. This is what I call Canada. Okay. This is the back side. Yeah, this is the back side where it goes deeper. Uh -huh. So, other than just kind yeah. of showing the bottom and everything. The turtle might be over here somewhere. You know, the picture or the thing of it was over there. 
There's a weird looking fish. That could be another paddle fish. We're just seeing him from the top. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen so many fish today. There's a couple more of them. Yeah, that's the paddle fish. They don't have it listed here. I don't think they have it. But there's more things fish. over there. Yeah. I don't know. Life below the surface of the Tennessee River. Yeah, paddlefish. That's the uh -huh. one I was just seeing. Uh, American paddlefish, one of the most unusual freshwater fish that can be found right here in our backyard is American paddlefish. At times, you'll see the aquarium's paddlefish swimming with their giant mouths wide open. They are filter feeding or straining plankton from the water. Their long paddle-shaped snout has sensory organs that can detect electricity from their tiny prey. But what else might they be collecting and ingesting in the wild as they feed? Plastic particles. Microplastics are tiny particles of plastic in the environment. These bits of plastic are often broken down from larger plastic items that litter our waterways. They can obstruct or damage an animal's digestive tract as well as deliver concentrated toxins. Of course, how you can help, it keeps reiterating those steps. Holy cow, what is that? It's a catfish. That is a big catfish. Mm -hmm. Is it the whiskers? Yeah. I've never seen a catfish that big. Uh -huh. Wow. And catfish are bottom feeders. Yeah. And I think that's a gar. Yeah. There's another one up there. That is the channel catfish. That's a channel cat? Yeah. That's what it, that says right there. That's the only catfish that's listed. Yeah, wow. Big fish. He's about two and a half, I would say. No, he's, yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, Why look down here? What are those spiky looking fish? There's a turtle. Ones? I found him. Oh, you found him? Oh, yeah, he's hiding up there. He's hiding in the little alpha. There are two turtles that would be. Oh. Finally found the turtle in this uh -huh. exhibit. <laughs> uh, that was a bluegill I was looking at. These spiky ones over here. They got their fins down yeah. now. Okay. But they had it up. And it was kind of spiky. Yeah. Okay. So they take you up to the fourth floor in the escalator, and then you gotta walk all the way back down. Okay. Water down there. Yeah. And I think that's a quote unquote fishing pond. Because I think those are coins down there. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but. Yeah. Are. Can't tell. Nicaragua was once part of the Pacific Ocean. Over time, volcanic activity altered the land and trapped many marine animals in the lake. Species such as tarpon, sawfish, and bull sharks have adapted to living in the fresh water. Red devil, nine and a half inches. Gapote tiger, I guess, 22 inches. Gapote, 29 inches. Flyer cichlid, four and a third inches, and yellow jacket cichlid, 11 inches. Uh, I guess all these bright colored fish are the red No, devil. no, well maybe, but we got another sign with more fish, because I see fish that I haven't seen on signs yet. Midas cichlid, 10 inches. 
convict, convict cichlid, four inches. Nicaragua cichlid, six and a half inches. Black belt cichlid, 10 inches. And rainbow cichlid, three and a half inches. They're basically the same color. Uh huh. But if you notice, see on the head, uh huh, it's a bumpy. It's, it's got like a forehead. Yeah. And yeah. Like that, one. that one is real obvious. Yeah. And I think this one right here is a convict cichlid. The stripes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I see why. That's funny. <laughs> I see why, where you got his name. I got stripes. <laughs> I got stripes on my shoulders. Is uh, that the way it is? Uh-huh. <laughs> what about that black one? See, we get that here to some of these, yeah. they don't have the bump. See, he doesn't have the bump. He's more rounded. And he's got blue on him. These don't have blue. Yeah. Maybe that one over there? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Because he's different color. <laughs> that one? Backing up? <laughs> He's got the one fin. Yeah, that's weird looking. Amazon flooded forest. The Amazon has two seasons, rainy and dry. The rainy season may flood the forest in 30 feet of water for weeks ahead of time. Wow. Banded cichlid, eight inches. Rip saw catfish, 40 inches. Leopard, Catfish, two feet. Oscar, 12 inches. Jeffrey's side neck turtle, 14 inches. And spotted belly's side neck turtle, 16 inches. I know that's I think that might be the catfish. And on the bottom. Yeah, he's not moving. <laughs> yeah. Is he sleeping? Probably. I hope so. There's a turtle. Yeah. Although it is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big fish. Uh -huh. I know it's difficult to tell in the video just how big these things are in relation to anything, but let me tell you, they're big. Keep in mind, um, I don't think that's any of those. No. Yeah, I think that's probably Tampa Cui. I think that's that one right there. Uh huh. They're up to three feet. Three feet. And they're pretty close to the three Para feet. Parapetita, 28 inches. And Silver Arowana, four feet. Yeah, that's a skinny one. Yeah. Oh, he's up there he's at the up top. There, yeah. He's right there. And now he's hiding behind the branches. These are all that three foot yeah. guy. Yeah. You see them up there at the top. And these are about three feet, or they get up to three feet, I guess. That's yeah. not really a three footer. Yeah, that's probably about two. Yeah, maybe. And then that this big guy. Three. No, he's about the same size as those. Yeah, I think he's a little bit longer. Yeah. That's what he said. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Share it out with your friends. Leave us a comment down below. Tell us what your favorite part was. If you saw an animal that you really like, your favorite animal. If you've been to this aquarium or any other aquarium around the world, let us know down in the comments down below. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you do subscribe and smash that bell icon so you get notifications when we upload new content, which will be, which will be at least one new video every week. We hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next one. We hope you enjoyed exploring the Tennessee River Gallery section of the River Journey at the Tennessee Aquarium with Wolf Spirit today. Check out the next and last section, the gift shop.